hackers literally control the malware with emojis? This story and more on ThreatWire. I'm gonna give two final updates about these stories and let them go to rest. They do seem to be reaching their final stages, but since we covered them in the past, I wanna make sure I give complete updates on what's happening. First, it's official. Microsoft has chopped the recall product. Last week, I mentioned that Microsoft released a formal statement on June 7th announcing major changes to the recall software. On June 13th, they released an update to the recall launch. It's no longer going to be generally available, but instead will be rolled out to their Windows Insider program. We are adjusting the release model for recall to leverage the expertise of the Windows Insider community to ensure the experience meets our high standards for quality and security. This decision is rooted in our commitment to providing a trusted, secure, and robust experience for all customers and to seek additional feedback prior to making the feature available to all Copilot Plus PC users. So we did it. Microsoft has recalled Recall and is going to go through more rigorous public testing of the product. Second, an update about the Ticketmaster Snowflake data leak situation. As we said last week, according to Mandiant and Snowflake, the leaks stemmed from data collected from a malware campaign. One of the things that I missed to say was that in some cases, the Snowflake leak originated through access via third-party contractors. The hackers, known by the group title Shiny Hunters, apparently got in direct contact with Wired reporters and said that one third-party firm was EPAM Systems, a Belarus-based digital services firm. The hacker says his group, which calls themselves Shiny Hunters, used data found on an EPAM employee system to gain access to some of the Snowflake accounts. EPAM told Wired that it does not believe that it played a role in the breaches and suggested that the hacker had fabricated the tale. According to Wired, EPAM was not aware of these accusations when asked for comment. At this rate, there's a lot of information going left and right and all around, so if you want updates, let me know, but this is the last time I'm gonna be updating on this story. The team at Velexity is at it again, hitting us with interesting threat research. Alias UTA0137 uses a malware named Discomoji, which is malicious software written in Golang, Golang mentioned, for Linux-based systems. Specifically, I'm calling out Linux here because the targets of the attack, government entities in India, use a custom build of Linux called BOSS for their daily drivers. The way it works is that it starts via a phish attack. Once downloaded, the user runs a UPX packaged ELF file stored in a zip folder that downloads a PDF. The PDF is displayed to the user and the malware is free to run. It runs the payload and hides itself on the target's computer. The payload is the Discomoji malware, which uses Discord as its C2 server. Running as a cron job, Discomoji persists and listens for new messages from the command channel in the Discord server. Specifically, what's interesting about these commands from the C2 server is that they're actually emojis. The attacker literally controls the malware using emojis, which is so interesting. After infection, the malware does execute the normal stuff like file sharing, network scans, network tunneling, and sometimes will show a pop-up to try and get the victim to type in their password. How fun! In their exploration, Velexity also found that the threat actor was deploying a privilege escalation exploit from 2022. Looking further, Velexity found that even the most recent version of the BOSS OS was still vulnerable to this exploit, hence why the threat actor was using it. This exploit has a lot of interesting factors, the emojis and the old unpatched exploits, but maybe this might not be new to you, but to me, the most interesting part of the story was the fact that I learned that BlackBerry, yes, the phone company, has pivoted to be a cybersecurity company and was referenced in the blog post as a group that noticed the use of the Discomoji malware earlier in May of 2024. The members of the Scattered Spider cyber criminal group are very young alleged to be compromised of 19 to 22 year olds, so basically college kids. They've allegedly infiltrated huge companies like Walmart, LinkedIn, GitHub, and Apple. As hackers, we remember the MGM and Caesar attacks that took place last year and how we got the fingers pointed at us because it happened pretty close to DEF CON. That was actually the work of Scattered Spider. Caesar's Entertainment allegedly paid $15 million in the ransom attack. 
Scattered Spider is best known for their social engineering, phishing, and sim swaps to gain access, but maybe not anymore. This week, one of their leaders, who goes by the moniker Tyler, was arrested while trying to flee from Spain to Italy. Turns out his real name is actually Tyler, and he's actually from Scotland. There's currently a warrant for his arrest in Los Angeles County, hence the action. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of June 17th, 2024. As we get towards the longest day of the summer, I want to remind all the viewers to drink water and to wear sunscreen. Nothing is as cool as being hydrated and not being sunburned. Besides going to DEF CON, do you have any fun plans for this summer? Let me know in the comments down below. And before everyone says, oh, I don't go outside, I mean, me too. I get it. You know, we got things to do on the computer. As a reminder, you can support this ad-free show over at patreon.com slash threatwire. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. I actually just posted a new YouTube video on my personal channel and would love to hear your thoughts on it. Until next week, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.